Well, right now it's not conserving anything because they don't have any power because they lost elections. But I do want to uh, speak to John's <laughs> point specifically in that That's he used the magic answer. word, which is pan. That's you a stop answer. It? Yeah, it totally is. Yeah. During the left panders to the LGBT movement, Trump did advocate for LGBT policies. He did so by appointing the first openly gay member of the cabinet, which the left likes to forget about all the time. He did support this community. He just didn't do it in a way that was pandering. But again, like I. Well, I disagree with that. Uh, policy of wise. Well, no, of policy you wise, disagree. the only LGBT thing that I think Trump did was uh trying to to remove same um same sex protection from gender discrimination lawsuits which is a huge blow actually to the lgbt community i don't they were not successful to my knowledge so hey i'm a liberal because i believe in individual liberty individual freedom i'm very concerned with preserving specifically our first amendment values and and all the amendments specifically but the first amendment's really my jam which again does not allow which one's the first one i can't i, I forget that's the gun one adam no freedom of speech <laughs> don't you do that don't freedom you of do speech. that freedom of speech freedom of press freedom of assembly uh freedom of religion freedom to Freedom to complain. I love it. Freedom to complain. For the state to legislate based on one religion's specific values. But if we want to talk about religion, we can talk about uh, a verse from the Bible, which is 1 Timothy 2 verses. How does she do this? How did how, she Carlin, had it ready? She had Carlin, prepared. how do you have that on the ready? She was prepared. She did her homework. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. One through two, which says, I urge then, first of all, the petitions, prayers, and sessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and for those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And I bring that up because that is the only place in the New Testament that really touches on the relationship of Christians to government. And what does it say? It says they should pray for the, the people in leadership so that they may live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and holiness. So what does that mean? It means that we should be working on electing a government that allows people to practice whatever religion they want and to live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and holiness. And the only way that we can do that is by creating a broad coalition of voters who win elections. That's what we should be talking about, first and foremost, is how we win elections. Um, I, before we go, I'm going to go to John, because John was John was sort of laughing. There's another good Bible <laughs> quote. There's another good Bible quote I like, too, which is... Uh, uh, Jesus said, this always comes up when, when people talk about the war on Christmas. Jesus said, oh, you know, you should go pray in your closet alone, privately. You know, your relationship should be between you and God. And the people who go out in the streets and make a big deal about praying, those are the frauds. They don't actually care about the religion of their God. They just, they want to put on a show. They want to say, look how pious I am. But they're not they want really to pander. Actually. Yeah, they want to pander. They want a virtue signal. Jesus yep. is coming out against virtue signaling way back then in the Bible. Yeah, based Jesus right there. Based Jesus. There you go. During that, and so why are you laughing? I was I was humored by uh, the biblical substantiation for having more gay people in government. I, I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, no, I I don't think that like even you push back on what I. Where in the Bible does it say no gay people in government? <laughs> I thought it was well, like render under yeah, Caesar. Was, what is Caesar's? Right. Well, like, that was did also, it pretty much separate government from religious life? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. also the quote that uh, Carlin just just uh, said, and yeah, sure. he totally just straw man the the position that she put out, but that should be par for the course here, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, straw manning abounds. I had said about the rendering Adam's law. <laughs> Adam's well, Trump appointed these people and he appointed these people. So he was actually like, you know, serving the interests of the community. It's interesting because, as you noted, the left will still ignore that because they control the narratives and they control the media. And so really, no matter what Trump does to pander to that, however many percent. Which would lead you to believe that it's not actually pandering. That's why when you said it was pandering, Sitch, I was like, well, it's hard to call it pandering. You know, if he's like supporting his LGBT lawyer on the dl it seems like he really cares about those people. i said well no no no. i'm saying trump not necessarily pandering wait no i didn't say i'm not trump is not no no no. i said trump like holding the lgbt lgbt flag is like the virtue signal right yeah. sure yeah but you agree with that 
Well, I don't know. I don't but think it's, Trump it's is only, personally it's only pandering if you're not personally invested in it, right? Let's well, look but, up pandering. Well, I, but wait a minute. This gets more complicated when you're a politician. Pandering. Okay. Because <laughs> if you have someone like Donald Trump, who I think personally has no issue with LGBT people, but then his executive branch is enacting policy or attempting to enact policy that will directly harm LGBT people. Mm-hmm. How is it pandering? What was because it? Because he was personally the, believes it. What was the legislation? And so, pandering, pandering is not pandering is yield or give satisfaction to. So it's really there's not any kind of negative connotation. Even though pandering, I think we conceptualize as doing something against your own interest to, for well, votes. Pandering generally in these conversations means virtue signaling it's, it's someone yeah. doing something to either get votes or that they don't really care or believe yeah. in while doing they're the insincere opposite. about it. yeah right. insincere right. motives just to gain sure. power anyway but what what was the anti-lgbt legislation so, you brought it up a couple times and i i can i never know what it is so currently um you can't fire someone for being gay mm-hmm. and the reason you can't fire someone for being gay is that it's considered uh when it, when it says you can't fire someone right now, like under the law, it's you can't fire someone for being uh, a specific race or a specific gender. Mm-hmm. And there was a lawsuit, I forget, in like the 80s or something, where they wanted to fire some woman because she wouldn't wear dresses. You know, she wanted mm-hmm. to dress in like <laughs> a suit, you know, or a, mm-hmm. she wanted to wear pants or whatever. And so the court said, well, you can't fire a woman for not being feminine because that's a version of sex stereotyping. You're stereotyping mm-hmm. someone on the basis of their sex. Mm-hmm. You're saying people of certain mm-hmm. sex have to have normative sex behaviors. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that opinion basically led to protecting uh, gay and trans people. Yeah, under the same, Yeah, under the same idea, because you're saying, wait a minute, if you fire someone for being gay, you're really firing them because you're saying they're not following the normative values ascribed with their sex. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the Trump administration was actually trying to get that overthrown and removed and say, no, 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 that clause only protects pe- firing people from their s- because of their sex. It doesn't protect fire- firing gay people or trans people. Mm-hmm. So they actively what about, went out of what their about way non-binary? to try to get that removed. What about non-binary? It would protect non-binary people too. So if you were... If you were at work and knew you were going to get fired, couldn't you just say you were non-binary? <laughs> you could try, sure. And then just like sue them for firing you because you, you could, were non-binary. You could try to do that, yeah. If I knew I was going to get fired, I'd come out as non-binary. There you go. Like there immediately. You go. Pro tip, if you're going to get fired from your job, just come out as non-binary. So then you can you're tra- totally so you can protected. Threaten them, yeah. Well, I wonder if that's the reason the Trump administration was trying to get rid of it. No, that's not why they're trying to get rid They're trying to get rid of it because... The conservative argument has always been more about the strict letter of the Deregulation. law. Deregulation. Well, no, it's about the strict letter of the law. And they're saying, oh, well, the, the strict letter of the law says set protection from sex. It doesn't say sexual orientation. It doesn't say gender identity. It says protecting on the basis of sex, period. Mm-hmm. That was their argument. But do, do you think they were doing it to go after the LGBT community or they were doing it to deregulate? That's my question. They were intentionally doing it to go after, to remove the, the trans protections. Right. So they were going that after was their trans state. People. They stated it. The Trump administration stated that's why they were doing it. To get rid of, to throw trans people under the bus. They said, right. hey, we're but going they, after trans people here. Right. But the, and, but they were, no, they, they didn't. Were sly they couldn't about. have said that. They you wouldn't can look, come I out literally did a video on this. I literally did a video. Really? On this. Okay. Well, then you um, know what's up. What they were sly about is that they didn't say that it would also throw gay people under the bus, which it would, but they never mentioned mm-hmm. that because it's less socially acceptable to attack uh, gay people than it is trans people. So what was the argument? What was the argument that you made in the video? My only argument was just people saying that Trump is like the most pro LGBT candidate ever. And I'm like, that's not really true. That's, that might be true in terms of his rhetoric, but it's not true in terms of what his administration's actually his doing policy wise. Right. Okay. What was the purpose of, of, of limiting this letting, Basically, you're setting up a situation where people can fire somebody for being gay. Yeah. Like well, if they this, want to fire started, somebody for being gay, they can't. For being gay or trans. Okay. Right. And this started because there was a case, which I admit is a weird edge case, 
Mm -hmm. um, where a funeral home wanted to fire someone for being trans. Right. And because they hired a male and the person they hired a man a who was transitioning. And now, right. unfortunately, I sort of almost agree, or I kind of, I do agree to some extent uh, with the funeral home because, and I don't even know if they wanted to fire them. I think they wanted to move their position because I would agree that if you had, and you saw the, the person that was transit, look, and you had the person that was trans transitioning, mm -hmm. we have to be real here, okay? They're like a big fat guy. He mm -hmm. didn't transition well. He just looked kind of like a big fat guy in a dress. Okay. And I could totally be 100% sympathetic that if you're running a funeral home, you don't want there to be any, uh, you want the person who's going there to bury their loved one to not have to think or process like the workers there. They should all just be like yeah. in the background. Yeah. You know, that there should be no focus on them. And but if this you have, guy is center stage, obviously. Right. Like and if you have someone that sticks out like a sore thumb, and I would say this mm -hmm. is even beyond transing. If you have some like 10 foot tall brick of a man, it's, it'd be a little weird too. But if yeah. you have someone who's a, a trans person who looks not great, mm -hmm. you don't want that person to be the like in the front and face of your, of your funeral. And that, right. I think that's totally acceptable. And the Trump administration went to bat for the businesses instead of the trans people. Right. But the problem is the way in which they're going about it is removing all protections for all trans people and all gay people. Right. Which the yes. avenue in which they were going about it. They weren't seeking what would have been the more um, responsible way to do this would be for the Trump administration to instead try to get there to be some sort of legislation passed that would protect certain edge cases like the funeral home while not removing blanket protections from gay and trans people. Right. Because someone... Someone who has an axe to grind with gay people, Lauren, perhaps, who wants to go on a firing spree at her. <laughs> like she, she moves up the corporate ladder and now she's finally in a position to fire all the right. gay people at work. Sure. She starts exactly. going after all the gay people and this law is no longer protecting them. There's no reason why a gay person can't do a, a good job. And obviously, like, it's the, the, you're never going to run into the same problem that you had at the funeral home with a gay individual because. They can you would assume, become, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 